All right, Will, I made you co-host if you can let anyone in who comes. Got it. All right. As always, guys, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we will we'll get to you guys. All right. We'll start off with uh, Willie P. Morning, Christian. How are you? I, I cannot hear. Did it again. All right. Well, you we might start over. <laughs> morning, Christian. How are you? Good morning, Will. I'm fine. Thank you. You? I'm fantastic. Um, What can you tell us about uh, the availability of Ashley and Christian Kalina this week? A work in progress still. Uh, I wish I could say differently that we are having them back, but they are not quite there yet. Uh, and so we obviously I have the trust of the performance. I trust the performance department. They know that these are important players for us, including Guzman Corugo, uh, for a number of reasons, uh, experience, ability, and uh, also the position in which they play, but uh, especially for the experience and the leadership that they bring to the group. Uh, and so we just have to wait a little bit more, and but uh, we we have to trust obviously everybody that is available, and uh, I have no problem in doing that. You mentioned in Salt Lake, uh, the discussions in the training room were were frank in nature. Uh, how has the team responded to that this week in training, and and what adjustments do you feel like need to be made in terms of getting the final product correct on match day? Yeah, there is a lot of talk of, about that. There is a lot of, uh, but I think that, uh, I think also that uh, we need to put things in perspective, you know, and uh, I think that the guys played uh, at times good football. We were exposed by not doing things that we rehearse in training. In that sense, we had a frank discussion with the boys. The boys responded really well. And uh, they, in the sense that they understood, it's not difficult things, it's simple things that we do on a weekly basis. We train on a weekly basis. Of course, there are so many things when you play a game that you want to emphasize during the week. And uh, sometimes you emphasize something and sometimes some things more than you do other. And uh, you would hope that the things that you emphasize in the past and that you don't emphasize in that week are remembered. <laughs> but it's uh, human nature that probably, you know, you focus on what it is in front of you and you kind of neglect a little bit what uh, you didn't uh, focus then, uh, you know, in, in, other, in other moment of the game. And uh, there are different explanations of that. I think... Uh, we have a number of young players that they are making experience, that they are playing well for the club, but there is uh, it's different when you come and play a few games. And then after when you play the two, three, four games in a row, and then you start to build expectations. Psychologically, it's a different picture. And we need to allow time to these guys to, to come to terms to that psychologically and physically. Because also this is a league that we know that is quite taxing from... Uh, physical point of view for the traveling for the different surfaces in which you play and so especially in key position we have young guys that they are doing the best and they are happy with the performance but sometimes they are prone they can make mistakes uh, again the boys responded well they trained really well and serious uh, with a lot of intensity as we want and uh, we made a couple of adjustments that we want to see in the game and uh, we have to move on and uh, keep going and like I said in the past uh, even when we had uh, the three results positive that we need to stay this is not a moment to talk we are still building and uh, there will be moment to talk but not now now we have to you know put the head down and work uh, and to be really united as a group and to focus on what we focus on, our, on ourselves and what we need to do to to improve and to get us where we want to be. How difficult personally, you know, for you, I know you want to have a particular tactical structure and, and I know that that's important to you. How difficult is it to try to 
make sure you don't try to tweak too much because you want to keep some of that same philosophy and how much of a temptation is it to try to make kind of wholesale changes, whether it's formation, whether it's responsibilities, things of that nature? Well, I think it's a very good question, this one. It's a key question because uh, when you are trying to build uh, an identity and the way of play, sometimes you have to go through moments that are painful and uh, and there's always the question of do you adapt the system to the player? Do you adapt the players to the system? I think uh, long term a club needs to have a, a clear strategy. For me, the most successful clubs they have a clear strategy about the way they want to play and find the right characteristics, players that can execute. Uh, and uh, how much you change, how much you tweak, is always is a, is a very good point. Because at the same time, you want to get results, but you don't want to compromise too much. And I think that the boys understand the structure. They know how to play and they give the best shot. And uh, I think in the last game, I think there was harsh criticism towards uh, the boys. I don't say about me, but they can criticize me as much as they want. And I understand this is part of the game. But... uh, I thought the boys were criticized a lot. I thought that they had less uh, energy than the usual. And my job is to analyze why is that. So there are a number of factors that came into that. And I thought it was more that than the lack. Because even on the third goal that we concede, we are very close to score the goal. Because we put Jalen in a situation of penetrated on the right. And then he delivered across. So at that moment, my thinking is, do I want to go really defensive? Uh, and possibly this is an argument to have and uh, make sure that we don't concede. Oh, we keep playing. I still have the trust of the boys that when they go out and play, they create chances. And I didn't want to lose that. Maybe we were a little bit too open, a little bit uh, lack of energy for different reasons. And then uh, it was... Uh, a, a misjudgment from my part, and I can take responsibility of that, but it's because I trust the boys that when we have our, our structure of play, we we'll create chances. And I back my strikers and I back my players to create chances and to score goals. Uh, but it's something that I need to take into consideration if we concede, and then if we concede open chances, I don't like it. But if you look at the goals, because I hear uh, about people saying that we play too open, but uh, we are always in numerical advantage in all three goals. So it's not a situation where we are outnumbered three against two, four against three or two against one. We are like six in the box plus the keeper and they have four, three or four. So I would uh, think in those situations that we can deal with that a little bit better. We saw what we should have done better. We work on that and then uh, and then we move on. But uh, to be, we had uh, this spell of 10 minutes in which unfortunately, uh, we conceded uh, three goals and then it looks like it's the end of the world. Uh, I don't think it is and I think that we need to stay strong in this moment and uh, keep moving on, uh, believing in our ideas of playing and not to be blind in the sense that I can see there are c- certain things that I want to do better, but at the same time, so we had to start again from Toronto, not start again from scratch, you know? Appreciate the answers. Thank you. Thank you, Will. We'll move on to uh, Carol. Ryder, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Hey, Christian, how are you? Good, Carol. Thank you. You? I'm good. And I have to give a little personal shout out to Jen Hildreth, who's on this call. I'm not sure if she's listening at the moment, but she was an intern at the Atlanta Journal and Constitution when I was a writer there. She's like a young pup. And look at her. She's calling the game this weekend. So I'm really proud of her. And I hope you're enjoying getting to know her, Christian. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> having right. me. Yeah, and uh, as far as the team goes, you mentioned um, Westwood, Carujo, and Kalina. I wondered, are you? is your process, would you guys be tempted to get them some minutes with Crown Legacy? Is that even feasible within the rules? It is feasible, I think, and uh, um, especially for Christian, uh, this is certainly a consideration because he has been out for a long time, longer than Ash, obviously. Uh, the problem is if they can play minutes, you know, uh, if they can play minutes, certainly this is a consideration. Having uh, a second team 
is also good for that. So you can keep players fit. Also, the one that they are not part of the roster on the on the day for different choices. And also as part of those uh, and part of the rehab program, so that at least they can have sixty minutes in a control environment, and you know within a reason. But uh, that is uh, preparing them to the MLS stage. Obviously, it's very different the level of MLS Next Pro to the MLS. But uh, is uh, it's certainly a possibility, of course. And we have now this the the second team, and it's great. Uh, also for this reason. Great. And um, as far as um, tactic, tactics, I was just thinking, you know, last week there was so much action in each third of the field and not a whole lot of possession. I know you don't want to single out your midfield, but did you feel like that's kind of where some mistakes were made and possession was lost that could have helped? Possibly, you know, you are in a battle when you play a game and uh, credit to the midfielders of uh, Salt Lake that they were, that they are good players. We knew that. And, uh, they they responded well to the pressure that they had. Uh, but our midfielder, I thought that, uh, yes, maybe could have been a little bit tidier. Uh, I agree with that. We talk about that is is um, is something that we need to analyze uh, frankly and, uh, you know, calmly because it's part of our growing process. We want to minimize transitions, especially against teams that they have this ability to counter-attack and so in order to do that you have to be able to control the ball well in midfield to make uh, to the team to play together uh, not far from each other and to move the ball quickly and with accuracy and at the same time to be good in proactive defending so that the defenders while the game goes on and we are trying to build and create chances they at the same time they mark the opponents uh, I thought that uh, and, but also, Carol, there are moments in which, and if you see even the big games I was watching Champions League in the last couple of days, and uh, there are many situations that they are very similar to what we found in in uh, in the game against Salt Lake. So you try to build the play, and then they attack you on counter attack, and then you, in those moments you have to 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 respond. How do you do that? You defend, and then you all the players come back to help. This is part of being compact as a team, not just in possession, but also not in possession. So to concede a counter-attack is not the end of the world. You just have to be able to to deal with that. And we we felt as a as a coaching staff that we prepared that in the past weeks to deal with that. And uh, and then unfortunately some things they were not executed like uh, because if we did, I think we would be a lot less in danger. But this is a lesson for us to to learn and for young players to understand and uh, and to move on. Uh, we put it uh, past us, so we learn the lesson and then we move on. One one last one. I think Carol was back at CAM a good bit last week. Is that, I mean, did you, were you happy with him there? Do you still want to move him around a little bit? You know, what are you thinking? Yeah, we spoke, I spoke with Carol. I think that central role is very important for us also tactically, also without the ball. I think he can be our leader of... Uh, He's quite smart, tactically understand uh, well the way we want to play. So the way we want to press, the way we want to defend as a block is our leader in that. I want him to take the role and the responsibility to organize our front players to to defend from the front. And so in that sense, I think he could be an important player as well as the ability that he has. But by his own standard, I think he could have scored another two goals in that game, I think. And uh, because I rate him highly and the, the goal that he scored, I, I'm i not surprised that he can do that. Uh, I think he has another chance to do that when Camille give him, gives him the ball. And there is another one where I think Kerwin gives him the ball, similar to that. And I think uh, that Carol has the ability to finish all three of those. And that would be only in the first half. So we also had our chances. We had the chances with Kerwin. We had the chances with Enzo. So it's not that we didn't create anything. Um, unfortunately, the, this uh, lack of energy that we analyzed and that, because uh, I didn't see this in the week. In the week, we were pretty energetic. And so maybe we have to tweak something regarding certain things, but the performance department is aware and uh, it's an internal discussion that we are having. Thank you. You're welcome.
All right. Um, let's move on to Mike. Good morning, Christian. I'm uh, going to be a Good little morning, bit. Mike. I'm going to be a little bit quiet. I'm in a doctor's waiting room right now. So, oh. <laughs> so uh, first off, the fact. So you're, you're going to be asked question in a minute. I, I'm yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Uh, and no, no, my wife. It's my wife's appointment, not me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys are home for the for next two weeks. Is there some comfort in knowing that there's no travel? You have the the supporters behind you. Uh, not pressure for a home game, but the opportunity to take advantage of being at home. Yeah, I think the, the the possibility of not traveling will give us some comfort from that point of view. Also, to play in front of our supporters has to be, and it is for us a special motivation, extra motivation, but uh, always remembering that it's our duty and responsibility to motivate the crowd and to get them going. They are very generous with us, but at the same time, they are there to assist to a show and they have to uh, we have to put up a show for them we have to do well for them to deserve the encouragement and to get them going so it's a it's a pressure and it's, it's a responsibility that uh, i want us uh, i want our players to be very clear about that we need to feed our supporters uh, and not vice versa and then the ideal scenario is when you have this both uh, both ways this uh positive energy and uh, mutual, you know, love, understanding. This is the ideal scenario. But we are responsible to bring uh, energy to the stadium. Second one, I talked, we talked to Brant Bronico earlier this week, and I asked him, obviously, the second half in Salt Lake did not go the way you wanted to, that six-minute span. And I asked him, what is an unhappy Christian Latanzio like addressing his players? If you want, I'll tell you after your answer what he said. I'm just curious to know how you would describe your demeanor uh, when things aren't going well and you're talking to your team. Listen, I try to be myself. This is the most important thing. I don't want to be some somebody that I'm not. So I am, you know, I was born in Italy, so we have this passion that probably comes from the uh, where we where we were born, everybody has got his own roots. Uh, I am very passionate about football. I'm very passionate about this football club. I'm very passionate about the work that we are doing. I'm passionate about my players. I'm passionate about uh, the coaching staff. I'm passionate about the front office. I'm passionate about everyone, the ownership. And so I want us to do well. And for me to do well, uh, you can lose games. But you have to give every time 100% and you have to give good energy. This is a non-negotiable for me. When I when I see us trying our best and we come short ability-wise or against a team that is showing that they are better than us, I can accept that I am not happy because there is always the competition going on, but I can accept that. But when I think that we are, uh, that we find a team that uh, put more energy than us, that uh, seems to want it more than us, I cannot accept that. And then I make sure that my players uh, know that because I, for me, is, this is impossible to accept. I don't know what Brand said, but uh, uh, I'm, I give you my version. And uh, again, for me, the, the most important thing is that uh, I want my players to uh, know that, uh, that I'm congruent with the message that I give them that, and I am myself. I don't, I don't want to lie to them. I want to tell them exactly the way I see things. I might see things in the wrong way. I'm not, I don't have the, the truth in my pocket, but uh, certainly I want to be myself and I want to be honest with them. Well, if it makes you feel any better, that's exactly how he described you. Passionate, wanting his, wanting his players to do well. So they're, they're, that's a, he has a good read on you. Um, mm -hmm. my, my last question for you, you know what it is. Um, <laughs> the catalog of Al Pacino. What is his great? What is, in your opinion, what was his greatest role? A uh, Scarface. I am by. I like Serpico, but Scarface. Uh, I love this movie. I love the. You know, what what is the English name? Every any bloody Sunday. What is the what is the coach? Any any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. Sorry. And I was confusing with the U2 tune. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, no, is uh, Scarface is something maybe because I watched it at, at the time that uh, I really love his interpretation and uh, and the story of that of that Cuban immigrants uh, to Florida. But uh, yeah, this is the one. What about you, Mike? Wow, I I for sure had scent of a woman for you, or, or <laughs> but this or... is an Italian movie originally with uh, with Gasman. <laughs> so that was I, a, a remake of an American one. So I didn't even watch that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. And Serpico was a, a to me a completely underappreciated and underrated film by a lot Thank of you. folks. It's it, it's a classic. Thank you, yeah. Christian. Appreciate Thank it. Best of luck Thank this you, week. Mike. Thank you. Thanks. Right. We'll just do two more guys. We'll go to Steve, and then we'll end with Sam. Okay. Thanks. And as a Georgia grad, I'm going with Dog Day Afternoon myself, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, you brought in uh, there are so many issues, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, but um, you brought Cambridge with you, who's been yeah. successful with Crown Legacy, um, and stuff. I was just wondering what your assessment was of his play. Uh, well, Brandon is a, is a guy that uh, has been training with us in preseason. That we know him well. He has a very good character. I like uh, I like him, and I think uh, the club did well to secure him for uh, for our club. He has. Uh, I like to to see the person behind the player, you know. And I think Brandon is uh, is a committed guy. He's a guy that uh, gives hundred percent. That is very coachable. And this is credit to him that he's uh, he's flexible in his uh, in his uh, listening and learning. Uh, he's committed. He has a uh, good football quality, a speed. He has technique. Uh, he needs to improve, obviously, experience wise. And uh, to play in MLS is different than to play in MLS Next Pro. The the players you play against are more experienced, are uh, obviously better players. Uh, with uh, different characteristics and uh, a little bit more refined and sophisticated. So it was important for him to experience MLS and uh, to be part of the preparation of the game and also to experience uh, the, the game on the on the pitch. And I think he's only can only benefit him and the club. Uh, it's a player in which we believe. He's not the only one, but he's for sure, given that we are talking about him, he's a player in which we believe. And I think that... Uh, and we want to develop him in the best possible way because uh, because he's a guy uh, that uh, there is material to work with. Will he be with uh, Legacy on Friday night? Uh, or is probably, he still... probably because we could recover Mackenzie Gaines. Okay, well, actually, Mackenzie, what was the the his injury that kept him out of uh, Salt Lake? It was a muscular injury, and uh, that could have been uh, could develop in something more serious. So we decided not to risk him, and uh, okay. so then he didn't travel. He stayed here to to continue his rehab, and fortunately, he could be ready for the Monday session. And he has been training well until until yesterday. So we are uh, we are confident that he will be back at one hundred percent. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, and we'll end with Sam. Uh, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Um, so, Coach, um, first first question: in in about forty five days, uh, we will be at your one year mark as coach. Where do you hope that the team is by then? I hope that the team uh, will continue to grow. Uh, in uh, in being an offensive team and in developing an offensive mentality to play offensive football you you have to start firstly with um, an attacking mentality and this is something that we are developing uh, attacking mentality is uh, not just when you have the ball but also offensive mentality attacking mentality is also when you don't have the ball in in attacking the players and in the execute uh, the defensive play strongly. But I want to, because I know that there is a lot of saying, uh, a lot of talks, but, uh, you know, in order to move on, uh, you also have to have uh, a fair shot. You know, uh, we brought three players in 
Uh, one, unfortunately, since Orlando, we couldn't have, and he's, uh, we know how important he is. Bill, he obviously is a player that we brought in to replace our Anton, and then uh, he's still coming to terms, and he, he came just after the preseason was, uh, was done, so he missed a big chunk of the work. And then he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's again, Guzman still missing, Kalina still missing. And, you know, when you have that kind of leadership on the pitch that can help and solidify the players that they are playing, uh, it, it gives us everybody a little bit of, uh, of uh, confidence boost. And at the moment... We are, uh, you know, we are uh, trying to do our best with what we we want to honor every time the game, and I think the boys did well in doing that. We had the lapse of, uh, let's say, concentration, energy uh, for ten minutes that we that it was very costly. Okay, we conceded all the chances, but we created also a uh, few chances ourselves, and uh, you know, people. Uh, had to take th things into consideration. It's very easy to say that everything doesn't work after the result, but uh, I don't think this is the way. And uh, we are trying to go through a path. And uh, to be judge, uh, you know, let's uh, have all our boys in place, and then, you know, then I think that uh, a fairer assessment could be made. And, uh, you know, as, as I think you've mentioned multiple times and, and it's also been mentioned uh, outside these press conferences, um, you know, we, there have been so many setbacks um, in terms of uh, injuries, losing players, um, specifically because with Real Salt, Salt Lake, a lot of talk has been a, about the defense. Um, who have you... Um, who have you really asked to step up and be defense, defensive leaders? And, and what are you um, asking of them or telling of them to get the um, the performance that you want out of our back line? So another good question this is, um, because uh, he allows me to talk about the, uh, leadership a little bit, because I think leadership is a very spoken subject and sometimes uh, misunderstood, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's easy to say, you know, I ask so-and-so to be the leader and that's it. Uh, so I've done my job, I cover my back and that's done. But I believe I ask everybody. And the football is a situational game that requires situational leaders. So in set pieces, uh, we will have somebody that will take care of uh, those situations. I ask Carol to be the leader in organizing ourselves to press for the front, so to give this defensive strategy. At the back, I ask everybody, and they are responding. They are responding. They understand that the mistakes they made uh, is something that uh, they know they should have done better. We work on that. But at the same time, we have guys that, uh, as I said, Bill only came uh, at the end of preseason, so he missed a vital chunk of our work and is catching up. Adil is a very young guy that, you know, he... he is coming is very talented we love adil but he also must be given the chance to make mistakes because he's part and parcel of growing up as a human beings we only learn by making mistakes george marx is doing well but this is another young uh, player that is entitled to make mistakes and unfortunately if that uh, happen in the game you know sometimes you can pay him but he has been doing well so i am asking everybody to step up and to take leadership in the moment in which they can take leadership. So when we build from the back, when we organize our defense, when we are in attacking. So I'm asking role, uh, clear role uh, responsibilities to all of them during the play. It takes time and uh, we are not, unfortunately, we cannot count on the experience of people like Kalina, people like Guzman, people like Ashley that also can help you with their talking to minimize or to help them to recognize situations and uh, to be alert in situations that they might drop a little bit of uh, uh, the focus because of the young age. So again, we have to give time to these guys. And uh, this, the moment of difficulties are also moment of opportunities where we are we can build our foundation to go to go places. And uh, we just need to be patient and keep working.
and and that really in a lot of ways answers what my final question was was going to be but i'll give you a, a chance to put a pin in it coach um you know you have had a a fan base that's been a little more restless and frustrated uh yeah. than normal at least online um mm-hmm. what you what do you say to them um like why why do you know that that this team can um can come back and make the playoffs and, and make a, you know, um, really live up to a, the pretty high expectations that we had this year. <laughs> no, this is the, this is the thing. Listen, I said to the guy, to our supporters to back up the guys uh, because they work, uh, they work hard on a daily basis in training and they deserve their support. This, this is without a question. Uh, they go out with, uh, with the uh, heart on their sleeves and they want to do really well for them and uh, and for the fan base that they deeply love. I know this for a fact because we discuss about that on many occasions. At the same time, they have to trust the process and uh, the high expectation, I, as I said uh, before, they are, in order to be realistic, they have to wait until we have got all, all our players in place and uh, because it's uh, otherwise it's not even fair on the, the young guys that they are giving the best, you know, we have to give them a chance to to play the game. And I think that they are capable of doing that. But remembering that the, the limited experience that they have and they have uh, they are building on uh, on a, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis in, in MLS. So it's great to have a high expectation. We want to go to the playoff. We believe that we can still achieve this objective. And uh, just trust the process that the boys are working really, really hard and well on uh, on a daily basis. So if nothing else, to give them the support. But at the same time, I understand that we have to deserve that. And I am looking for no excuses, no alibi. It just has stayed in the facts that... Uh, uh, probably our more experienced players, barring uh, Arizona Full and Carol, uh, they are uh, that is also on the second year in MLS and so just arrive are uh, are not on the pitch, and that also is important for a team because there is a tactical element, there is a physical element, there is a technical element, but there is also a psychological element, and to have leaders. Uh, all out, uh, you know, the most experienced players out of the out of the squad is uh, is not easy for us. Thank you, coach. Thanks for the time and best of luck on set. Okay, thank all you. Right. Thank you, guys.